Welcome back, friends. Come on in, pour yourself a cup of tea, get cozy, and let's paint some watercolor herbs together. Hey guys, my name is Shada Campbell, and I'm gonna start with a quick supply rundown. So I'm using cold pressed watercolor paper from Canson, uh, and then I have a little pocket set of watercolors from Mungyo. I think this is the second time I've used it on camera, um, but I'm just loving it. I'm so impressed with the quality and I plan to buy a larger palette. I also have a number four round brush. This is a sable hair brush from Kalinsky. I will link that in the description and then two glasses of clean water and some paper towel for blotting. I'm going to start by mixing up a nice green. The first herb that I'm going to paint is thyme, and I wanna mix a very dark, rich green. So I'm using this minty green, and I'll also mix a little bit of blue in there, and even a hint of brown to get this really nice dark green color. You can see the color I'm mixing up. It's nice and rich and I'm putting that brown in. And before we begin to paint, I just wanted to mention that you'll be able to print my uh, painting, my herb painting for use wherever you like. Patrons have access to all the bonus content. So head over to Patreon and check it out after the video. Okay, so I am starting with a stem. Now the thyme has all these little branches going off every which way, and I usually just start with one or two branches. I'll add more later, but I start with the two here, and then I'm adding these tiny little leaves. I tend to do them in pairs, and uh, leave a little space between the, each pair of leaves. And some of them I do almost like a little X. So some of them look like little butterflies, and some look like little Xs. And that is how I do the thyme. Now it's time to add another stem. I'm doing that there. All of the stems curve slightly and uh, we'll get really close so you can see. But each leaf is really just the flick of that brush. So I use the tip of the brush, the very point, to do this very delicate stem, these branches going off every which way. And then we sort of just, you know, flick that brush or run it across the page lightly. And the leaves can be any sort of shape. Some should be nice ovals, but others might be almost rectangular. Others will be just lines or spots. So very perfectly imperfect as usual. And uh, as this time comes together, I will start to add some really tiny branches, just sort of wherever, wherever you think one might look good, wherever you wanna fill in a little bit of extra space. And you can put some tiny little leaves on those. We'll add one last one sort of popping out to the side here. And that is how we, we paint our time. Now the next one that we're going to do is sage. So I'm mixing white into a sort of a rich green. I've added a bit of brown to this green as well. I want my sage green to be light yet opaque and warm without being yellow. So um, I think I've mixed up a nice color here and the sage leaves are quite large. So we're going to make them with either one or two brush strokes. And I just drag the brush across the page once or twice. You use the belly of the brush to drag it and create those leaves. The round brush holds paint really nicely. And then you use the fine tip of the round brush to do the delicate stems. So we'll drag that brush across the page once or twice. And you can see I've added water to the paint as um, I go along with these leaves. And that's just so that some of the leaves are gonna be a little bit lighter. I get a nice variation without changing the color. And um, then I, I continue to add that stem and a little branch going off to each leaf. And the sage is quite simple. It has these nice, big, rounded oval leaves, and uh, they all sort of connect at one stem. And I think I'm just gonna add one last one here at the top. You can add as many leaves as you like going off in every which direction. Um, and uh, just connect them all with a delicate stem. And then we'll let that dry, and we'll come back once it's dried and add some detail. So let's move on and do rosemary. I'm starting in brown and I'm just doing a gently curving line. Then I come back in, I've got this dark minty green and using the tip of my brush, I am 
painting these little, they're almost like needles, I think of them, almost like pine needles. They're very thin, yet they're not just straight lines and they have to sort of go in every different direction. So some of them are angled up towards the top of the page, some of them are angled out towards the sides of the page. So make sure that when you're doing them, they get a little weird. They should go this way and that. You don't want them to all go the same direction or it will look too stiff. Um, some of them should be shorter, some of them should be thin, some can be thick. I mean, you get the idea, but that perfectly imperfect really applies here. So I'm coming back in with that dark brown and doing another stem crossing the first one, but this one's sort of more horizontal. And same thing with the, uh, with the little leaves. Some of them are oval shaped, some of them are straight lines. The, sometimes I add a little extra water and then some I've added a little more blue to make the color even more minty green. And I think the variation in opacity and the variation in color makes the rosemary look really interesting. You can do another little half stem if you like, if you feel like your piece needs it, you need a little more filler. I mean, heck, you could do two of those. You could put them on both sides as well. And that's it for our rosemary. So let's jump back to the sage. It's had enough time to dry. And now we want to come in with just a slightly darker green. And uh, we're going to use the tip of our round brush to add a line down the center of each leaf. And then if you like, you can add uh, some little veining lines. You don't have to. You can get as detailed as you like. You might just choose to just do the center line. You could add a bit of translucent paint and shade one or two sides of one or two leaves. Totally up to you. Okay, moving right along, the next one is parsley, and this one is really fun. So I'm starting with this curving stem that goes off in two directions. And then we just wanna put leaves at intervals along the stem, but they're like these shaggy leaves. So you just use the brush and you paint these little lines, basically, that all come together in a point. Think of painting a funny little hand or a little palm frond. Um, if you've got too much paint, you can sop it up a little with a, a dry brush and that will create some variation. Or you can paint your leaf um, in a very light paint and then add a bit of darker paint and that will create variation or contrast within each leaf. Here we're doing another shaggy one right on the end, very light paint, and then I'll come back in and add a bit of a darker green at the base there where it meets the stem. And uh, I think for the next one, I'll use a darker green. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like it's just like painting these little fingers. Don't overthink it. Some of them can be on a bit of an angle. Um, some might overlap the initial stems that can look nice. And at any point, you can add another portion to that stem. Um, I like to have them all joined as one, uh, although that totally doesn't matter. That's personal choice. <laughs> um, and I'll just keep on adding these funny, shaggy little leaves. Um, and you wanna do one at each end of each stem and then just a few down the length. So I think I need one more there to sort of fill in that space. And uh, that's it. The parsley is definitely fun to paint and I think it wouldn't be hard to vary this to create cilantro since it also has sort of shaggy looking leaves. So you could just change it slightly, change the color maybe. The next one that we're going to paint is basil. And uh, basil has these big rounded oval shaped leaves with deep creases in them. And we'll start very small at the top. And the leaves are in groups of twos and threes. So we're starting with three tiny oval shaped leaves. And then as we move down that stem, the leaves get slightly larger. And I often do them uh, one side at a time. So you can see I do one side of the leaf and then the other. And then I'll go back in and I'll sort of um, help to shape the leaf. I'll move the paint around to shape it a little more. It might make the leaf a little larger or whatever. So I'll start with the first side of one leaf and this leaf is sort of coming out towards the viewer. So it's pointed downwards. And the edges of the basil leaf are sort of jagged. Well, they're, they're sort of rounded, but they have a bit of a scalloped edge or a curving edge. So I'm going to try to show that here a little bit. 
since that first leaf is sort of pointing straight towards the bottom of the page, straight towards the viewer, we want to add two more leaves, but they're going to go off um, into other directions. So I've sort of done one on an angle on the side there, and we'll just sort of tuck it in behind. And then I'm doing a third one going off towards the top of the page uh, to show that the basil leaves grow outwards from that stem in all directions. You can make these leaves very perfectly imperfect. They can be just about any shape, just as long as they're round and the edges are slightly toothed. Um, I think that's sort of the key to the basil. They have these big, round, floppy leaves with the um, slightly toothed edges, slightly scalloped edges. I'm tucking one last leaf in there, so I've got um, these tri leaves, <laughs> except for one. One is just a pair of leaves, and that's fine too because nothing should look too perfect. Everything should look very natural. Um, so perfectly imperfect is your friend when you are painting botanicals. Okay, with the basil done for now, I'm going to move up top here and the last herb I'm going to paint is lavender. So I've got a very dark green and I'm starting with three stems, all slightly curving. I'm doing the lavender on a bit of an angle and uh, I'm going to use a very light, very wet purple and I'm just sort of doing a stippling. I'm letting the brush kind of hit the page in a haphazard manner and then I come back in with a darker purple and I kind of let it loose into that wet area. I don't want it to fill the wet area. I want to see the contrast of the very light translucent purple with that dark rich purple and that's going to give me a really sort of lively lavender. All the difference in color and these little petals, they're just sort of, it's the idea of lavender. We're painting, it's almost abstracted as if it were blowing in the wind. We're just doing these splotches of color. Some of the petals are in little pairs. You can leave space in between some of the petals. Lavender tends to grow like that where you'll see the stem in between. And uh, yeah, just putting the light paint down first, then doing the darker paint on top and letting some areas be a little darker and some a little lighter and you can sort of work that paint around. If you need to move it yourself, you can. And I'm just gonna lengthen this stem a bit and uh, we'll do some little, I guess some little leaves on the side there to just show a little motion and that's it for the lavender. To complete the painting portion of our piece, we'll come back to the basil now that it's had a chance to dry. And I am taking a darker green, not too dark um, and not too opaque either. It has a bit of water mixed in, oh, quite a bit of water mixed in. And I'm just doing a bit of loose veining. I start with a line down the center of the leaf and then I just put a few veining lines showing that, uh, that deep ridge that the basil leaf has. And if you'd like, you can use a nice translucent paint to maybe darken one side of the leaf or darken the top of the leaf or the bottom to show that parts of the leaves are curving away and not hitting the light as well. So that can make your basil plant a little richer, a little, it gives it a little more oomph, makes it a little more lively. And, um, Okay, and now that my painting is done, I am going to use a pencil and I'm going to label each herb. I'm going to make sure that I like where each of those labels sits on the page. And then when I'm sure everything looks good, I'll start going over the labels in pen. This is the O5 nib uh, Pigma Micron, so a fairly large nib. And that's just so that the titles stand out and have a little weight because they are an integral part of this herb painting. I'm super happy with the way the cursive looks with the loose and lovely watercolors. I think this painting would look really nice hanging in a pantry or kitchen. And uh, patrons, don't forget you can print and hang this in your home. Just head over to my Patreon site uh, after the video. Thanks for watching today, guys. I will see you soon with a new tutorial, so don't forget to subscribe.